Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this Legs Matter session. I'm Margaret Sneddon, Chair of the British Lymphology Society, which is one of the coalition members of Legs Matter. And it's a great pleasure to introduce this session today. You're going to be hearing from Rolf, um, a, a man who has lymphedema and who really encapsulates everything that this week is about. It's about taking charge of your own health and the difference it can make, and also about moving lots and being very active. And he's being interviewed by Anna Rich, who is a lymphedema specialist practitioner in Nottingham. So I'm going to um, let your video start, and then afterwards, um, I'll pick up any questions anyone has, but I think um, listen to their story first. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, my name's Anna. I'm one of the trustees from the BLS, um, and I'm here today. I'm going to interview Rolf, um, who's going to talk to us about what it's like to live with, with lymphedema. So hi, Rolf. Um, hi, Anna. Would you like to start by introducing yourself um, and telling us about where you live in the UK? Okay, I'm Rolf. I'm from originally from London, but I've lived in the East Midlands for the last 30 odd years. Um, and I now live in Derbyshire. Fab. Um, and can you tell us a bit about yourself, Rolf, um, what you do for a job? I'm, uh, I'm a civil servant uh, and now a part time CrossFit coach. Um, and I'm 61 years old. <laughs> So, um, obviously, I know you, Rolf, through um, the Lymphedema Clinic. Um, so if you could tell us a bit about your condition um, and explain a little bit about it for people who might not know what lymphedema is. Sure, Anna. Um, I mean, obviously, you'll correct me if I get this wrong, but I believe <laughs> okay. I have bilateral lymphedema, um, which means that I've got lymphedema in both my legs, which means both my legs swell up. And, um, you know, it's pretty much um, toe, to, uh, toe to thigh. Um, and it's um, a consequence of not having um, the main lymph channels in my legs. Um, most of my lymphatic drainage is, um, is um, subcutaneous. It's under the skin. So I have, I have less of a, a, a lymph drainage system than most people. And so gravity has a big effect in the way that lymph collects in my in my lower limbs. Okay, Bob. So, how old were you when you first developed lymphedema? Role? I, was, I was about well. I was about twelve or thirteen. I mean, as far as I know, I've always had the problem, but I think at twelve or thirteen, I sort of reached critical mass, and uh, I noticed that my ankles, or rather, my mum noticed that my ankles were starting to swell up a bit. Um, and um, from that, there were various medical um, interventions. Um, there was a query over whether it was kidney disease, uh, whether uh, varicose veins were an issue. And I had a couple of veins stripped out at, um, at the age of about 14. Um, but it was fairly quickly um, diagnosed after that. I mean, bear in mind, this was the 1970s and things weren't advanced. But then it was, you know, yeah, it's lymphedema. Here's some over-the-counter support hosiery and here's a here's, here's some diuretics off you go and that was pretty much it um, gosh quite an ordeal for a 14 year old boy <laughs> it was you know i mean i was a teenager and i was at school and kids and, then, cool and that's yeah it was it was yeah. it was it, I'm, I'm not saying it was tough a lot of people have it tougher but it was you know kids will find something to pick on and my swollen ankles were something they could they could point at I mean, it wasn't too bad. I mean, yeah, I was I was a young, fit, sporty guy, so um, it really, you know, it didn't affect me in terms of of function. And you know, I could always get over the the teasing by by being good at sport. Had you ever come across lymphedema before when you developed it? Never had absolutely no yeah. idea what it was. Um, and in those days, you know. We didn't have Google. Did. It, wasn't, it wasn't very easy to find out about either. So very much in, in the hands of the doctors. Yeah. And did they diagnose lymphedema quite quickly for you? No, I don't think. I think I'm not sure. I'm not even sure that it was ever properly diagnosed as it was. It was diagnosed as edema. Uh, I'm not sure if it was if it was diagnosed as lymphedema or when it was diagnosed as lymphedema but the the general consensus of opinion was that there wasn't much to be done 
um, I, I pretty much, I, I pretty quickly worked out that it was a, a, you know, a fight against gravity, and that if I put my feet up, the the, the lymph would drain. So, um, you know, I started, you know, spending a lot of time with my feet up when I wasn't where I, when I wasn't active. Perfect life for a teenager. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah, it, it did fit in quite nicely with the lifestyle yes. of, a, of, of a teenager. And obviously, yeah, there, there were difficulties, you know, explaining to girls what it was, you know, mm. um, and, you know, having girlfriends. But, you know, I mean, I was, I was a fit, young, athletic guy and, you know, it was just a minor thing in those days. Mm. You know, what, what, really, what really happened is it really made it worse was um, inactivity. So as I got older, I got married, had kids, did less sport, got office jobs, um, spent a lot of time sitting down put on a stack of weight you know it just you know it was it, it just got worse and worse and gradually moved up my legs mm. so by the time I was 30 it was basically affecting the whole of my um, of my legs below the knee um and starting to affect you know the way I could you know whether I could wear trousers or a particular style of trousers or not um more time my feet up perhaps missing out on certain social things because, you know, I didn't want to, I couldn't put my smart trousers on, you know, in the evening because I'd, I'd, been, I'd been on my feet all day and my legs were big. Um, didn't really wear shorts, didn't re- didn't get my legs out on holiday, felt a bit self-conscious. And it, that whole thing sort of breeds on itself as, you, as, as it goes on. I started mm. to feel heavy, slow, and, and the whole thing sort of started to define me. I was always thinking about, well, you know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna have to plan um, timing my feet up, and you know that means I can't do this thing that we were gonna do before we went out. And you know, sometimes you just have to say, well, family life is is family life, and you have to you have to join in. So you know, it was it's. I'm not saying it was the most difficult thing in the world, but it wasn't it wasn't the easiest thing in the world as well. Um, I mean, you know, without the without my family support, I, th- I think it would have been a hell of a lot worse. But um, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a difficult thing to to manage I mean you know and I was I was a bloke I mean you know if I was in trousers nobody turned a hair but you know what it must be like for a woman in the similar situation I, I've, I've you know I'd struggle to um to you know to, to to really you know list the consequences it must be awful and it sounds like um from what you were saying that things got noticeably worse as you became less active and yeah. gained weight that's right definitely I mean you know looking back it's obvious at the time it wasn't necessarily you know I didn't I didn't um, necessarily make the connection between those two things you know I just thought oh this condition is getting worse but actually you know there was a lifestyle element as well and um, you know the more weight I put on and the less active I was the worse it got yeah and have things got better for you now no um, immeasurably um I, I had a bit of a midlife crisis at 40 and, and decided to, to try and sort my life out. Um, I'd been, for, for the, the years leading up to 40, I'd been running pubs. And because it was an active job, I'd shed a bit of weight. And I was moving about more during the day and my legs were manageable. Um, at, around the, the age of 40, I got an office job again. Um, and suddenly it got, immeasurably worse really quickly started working its way above the knee um i was fat and miserable basically and i I went to the doctors as i did occasionally just to say anything happening on lymphedema um to which the usual answer was nope um and and, you know do you want some more over-the-counter support hosiery and diuretics and you know no i don't want those um and i said to the i said to the doctor Um, I noticed that um, when I wear shoes, my feet don't swell. The shoes hold my feet in in normal shape. Isn't there something that can be done, you know, for the legs? You know, something a bit more, you know, a lot more uh, restrictive than than, than over-the-counter sport hosiery. And he said, oh, uh, I'll sadistic nurses that deal with that sort of thing. I'll get one to get in touch with you. Um, And this lovely district nurse came to see me. Um, did a few investigations, said, have you ever been to the lymphedema clinic? I said, I, I wasn't aware there of, of such a thing. Um, and she said, oh, it's been going about 10 years. <laughs> and at this time, I think it was out of the DRI. 
in, yeah. in Derby, Derby Royal Infirmary. Um, and it was an absolute game changer. Um, they quickly, you know, took me on, took me in their care, did the compression bandaging to, and squeezed a huge amount of fluid out of my legs over the period of about three weeks. Um, I had ankles again. Who knew? Um, the you know then you know the the proper compression leggings were were prescribed, um, and my legs were were suddenly something I recognised as legs again. You know they were. I mean you know most people I would think that are that watching this video have seen pictures at least of what lymphedema can do to your legs, and mine were pretty bad. Um, I have to say I was a bit angry about the fact that it, I'd, I'd not been referred to the clinic, you know, many years previously. It would have made a lot of difference in my thirties, but you know, I'm a pretty um, forward-looking guy, and I thought, well, this is this is better. I can wear trousers off the peg. I could be more active. I lost a bit of the weight that I gained. That made me even more active. And eventually, I got to the stage where I thought, you know, I need to do something about my fitness, and um, joined a gym. Um, and not really look back from there, and and that yeah. that whole equation of doing some exercise and losing a bit of weight has it just keeps going round in a circle. Every time I lose a bit of weight, the the legs get a bit better, a bit easier to manage. The only thing I would say is I do need to stay fit in order to get the things on in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's a workout in itself, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's my first workout of the day. Is, is getting them on but no i mean yeah the 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 difference it's made um has been i mean you you, you could you'd probably be better off asking the people that that are close to me but i've i, I describe it as um you know in a very dull way as going from can't be asked to can be asked you know i've, bec I've become a much more sort of you know can do can do person because i don't have to immediately think can I do this with my legs? Because yeah. my legs aren't the issue anymore. Oh, that's great. Was there anything else that's sort of been a turning point for you to sort of encourage you to be more active? Yeah, I just think, you know, um, I, 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 I looked back on my sort of, you know, rugby and cricket career and I, I played them to, you know, late in my 30s, late, in, late in, my, in my 20s. And I thought I was quite good. And I didn't give up because I was injured, as most of my peers did. I thought, I wouldn't mind another go at that. And um, getting fitter and, you know, having my legs manageable has meant I've, I've, I've gone back to both those sports. And I've played rugby with my son, which I never thought I'd do. And there's a chance that this year I might play with my grandson as well. So uh, oh, nice. <laughs> it's fabulous. But, it, but, but, you know, I like to set myself goals and... I have to say that that not having to, to to think every day about what my legs are doing means that I can concentrate on those goals. Yeah. So would you say now that you, your lymphedema doesn't dictate what you do? You Absolutely. manage your lymphedema and just get on with life. That's a, that's a really good way of of doing it. But I think that I think that's the key thing. You manage this condition. You know, it's it's something that needs management. It, there's, they can't cure it, as far as I'm aware. Uh, they certainly couldn't a few years ago, um, but uh, but it can be managed, and and the difference it makes, and and the the quality of life that it that it gives you back, you know, it's it's almost better than a, you know, not better than a cure, but it's but it's it it just allows you to get on with your life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, this is it, and I don't know, you know, I had no idea, I didn't like to look at the, the future with lymphedema. I didn't know how big my legs would get and how disabling it would be or how, or how high the, uh, the lymphedema would go up my body. I mean, you know, there was all sorts of worries about that. Eventually, you know, thankfully, I found you guys and, and you know, those thoughts aren't, aren't there anymore. Yeah, but I guess you've sort of grasped the management and sort of taken control of it. And, you know, that's, that's I think, great. I think that is, that is key. You know, you, the... the, the the, the help is there, the support is there, but you need to do it. You know, you, you need to manage the condition yourself. I mean, I still spend a lot of time on my feet up. Um, mm -hmm. The end, I have a, a bed with where I can raise the end of the bed. And so 
you know, every morning when I get up, my legs are, are down. They do get bigger during the day, but but the um, the compression leggings keep that within a within sort of known um, yeah yeah a, a known scale. So you know, I yeah you know, I don't have to worry about putting my legs up during the day in order to get trousers on later. And obviously that self consciousness is gone. You know, I, I, if I go on holiday, I'll go in the swimming pool and that sort of stuff. It, it, it's you know, but it, but it is down to you as an individual to to contribute to your care, if you like. But the support is there, you know, from you guys. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we like to see, sort of supported yeah. self management. So yeah, great. And what advice would you give to other people living with lymphedema? Get diagnosed and referred. Um, you know, there's lots of things I could say, you know, move more. If you're carrying a bit of weight, try and lose it. Realise it's largely down to you, but get the diagnosis and get referred to, the, to a clinic because, you know, the, the guys there will help you manage the condition. It will stop it being something you have to think about every single day. Yeah. And we hope that through sort of the work with the BLS and Legs Matter, that people have become more and more aware of lymphedema and we can spread yeah. the word and, Absolutely. you know, hopefully help people get referred and sort of put yeah. onto management plans at an sure. earlier stage. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, but yeah with, with, with the, you know, getting referred, I'm, I hope that the diagnosis and referral process is much easier than it was for me in the mm. 70s. Um, but, you know, the, that, you know, if you have an idea that you have lymphedema, then go to your doctor, get the referral and, and let the experts sort you out. Yeah, and that's what we like to see. We like to sort of pick people up early, manage them early before yeah. they get... Well, I mean, yeah, I wish I'd... You know, problems. Like, like I said, you know, there, there would have been a chance had the medical profession been been on board with, with what you guys do. Um, Ten years prior, I might have had, you know, you might have caught it a bit earlier. Having said that, you know, the, the outcome, even though it was caught quite late, is pretty spectacular. Yeah. And I think that's because you've you've been well behaved, Rolf. You've uh, Thank you, Anna. listened Thank to the you. advice. I do try. Yeah. Worn the compression. Yeah. And I think sort of going on to, you know, how much you've embraced exercise really, because you've you've clearly sort of turned your lifestyle around, haven't you? Yeah. From sort of yeah. quite a sedentary lifestyle to yeah. now. Can you can you just tell us a bit about the activities you do now and sort of your fitness regime well I, I was introduced to crossfit and which is a, a blessing and a curse um it's um if you like it every it, it it's a bit like um it's a bit like a cult people people liken it to a cult in that you know every time somebody starts crossfit all they ever talk about is crossfit i've so i, I like <laughs> no, it's a, it's a mixture. It's a it's a, just an exercise regime, but it's a it, it came out of the military, and it's a mixture of um, weightlifting, um, cardio, and uh, gymnastics, uh, which makes it sound which makes me sound a lot more um, you know Olympic than I am. Um, <laughs> but it's it's ultimately it's scalable to any person. Um, and that's one of the reasons I've become a coach is that, you know, I like I, I, I always say to these young coaches, you don't know what it's like to be old until you're old. And, you know, so I, I look after the, the older members. Um, but it, but the bottom line is, if you if you if you try, you know, if you've got an idea that you want to get fit again, um, obviously find something that you don't hate, because if you hate it, you won't be consistent at it. And, and just do more than you did yesterday. You know, to make your mind up right I'm going to be I'm going to consistently do more than I did yesterday so I will you know I didn't do anything today so tomorrow I'll go for a walk I had a walk today I'll go for a longer walk tomorrow um and don't forget your muscles especially as you get older um cardio is great you know runs walks you know cycling you know all those all those things are fabulous but keep your muscle mass high so lift some weights, do some press ups, squat like it's like it's your job. Um, and and I think a lot of us, I mean, a lot of people of my generation certainly think that exercise is five mile runs um, and and push ups. Um, and they think, well, I don't want that. Um, it isn't. There are all sorts of types of exercise out there, but don't be afraid to grunt and sweat. 
Yeah, it's you know, it's almost become you know, you see Mo Farah finishing a half marathon, and you know, like he's just about to walk down the pub or get the bus. You know, we're not all like that. We get sweaty. No, we no. get out of breath. <laughs> It's it's what happens. That means you're working hard. And that, you know, the great thing about CrossFit is everybody's working as hard as they can. Therefore, everybody's sweaty and, and, and out of breath. And suddenly it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You know? But if but you know, if you don't keep your muscles in decent nick, um, then the inevitable consequences of aging, which aren't muscle loss, you know, bone density loss and frailty there you know something is probably going to knock you down at some point as you get older um you know bits of your body will wear out bits of your bits of your insides will wear out um if you're fit when you go into that you'll get up again if you're already frail you won't and that um muscle and bone equation your bones stay strong because your muscles work against them if you don't use your muscles you won't build you won't keep your bones strong and that's where osteoporosis and sarcopenia, you know, age-related muscle loss start. It, it's not inevitable. It's not inevitable that you'll get frail, but you do have to work at it. You know, mm. I always call it paying into your paying into your physical pension. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's time. If you've got got a bit, if you've got a bit more time because you're not so busy at work, then that's the time you need to start, you know, doing squats and 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 lifting lifting a few weights and keeping strong. Yeah. And I guess it's never too late for people to start, is it? And well, I think yeah, that I, I was fifty-four when I started CrossFit. You know, I wasn't, and I was huge. Yeah, I was a big lad, and you know, it was it was quite an effort, and it's still an effort now. But that's because you know I'm fitter and I just work harder. You know, it's 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 never too late. You don't have to. What is it? You don't have to be fit to start. But you do have to start to be fit. Yeah. I know I really like your little bit about, uh, you know, just do a little bit more each day. And I think, yes. you know, that's often advice we give to people. So, you know, actually just get up, have a walk around the garden. If, you yeah. know, if you only it. ever get as far as the kitchen, just take it that little bit yeah. further. Especially from a lymphedema perspective, you know, a lot of your lymph lymphatic drainage is is just under your skin. And that's a, that's an effect of your muscles working against your skin. And obviously, if you've got compression hosiery on, it works against that as well and and, and mm -hmm. and increases that effect. But, you know, so sitting still with your legs down, like I am now, um, is really not a great idea for lots of reasons, not just lymphedema. Um, so, you know, where you can, you know, if you can stand, stand. If you can walk, walk. You know, if you can run, run. But, you know, just keep moving. Keep moving those muscles. Do some squats. Really good for you um just don't give up and don't think oh well this is pointless you know there are people out there that can help you but you have to help yourself yeah and can you can you give us one motivating message to get people more active <laughs> <laughs> um a motivating that's a that's a that's a that's a, a, a really difficult one <laughs> getting fit hurts but being unfit hurts more yeah I think well I think you're right and I think you've proved that you know it has you know your hard work has paid off and you know you've sort of okay. grasped your management of your lymphedema and mm. you know you've not been troubled by leakage infections nothing. you know Absolutely it's no nothing. longer restricting no. sort of your lifestyle so so no well done well done thank you thanks ever thank so much you, Rob. that's you, really good yeah well thank you for all your support over the years what's it how many years has it been it's got to be 15 now it is 15 yeah oh, <laughs> <laughs> you still look the yeah. same by the way <laughs> you're very kind <laughs> no brilliant thanks ever so much for sharing that with us Rob. you're very welcome right. i hope, I hope the campaign's a success yeah thank you take care cheers now bye Hello. Um, well, I hope you agree that that was a truly inspirational video. I'm sorry that Anna and Rolf aren't um, with us. I, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I think it, Rolf's story just shows um, the difficulties that many people have in getting a diagnosis for lymphedema 
and the struggle and then the difference it made to him first of getting some help but then taking charge of his own his own health care and it's also a useful reminder that lymphedema can affect all ages it's not just um, older people um, but some great inspirational messages there it's not easy but it's well worth it um, I'm just going to check if there's any questions coming up. Um, so someone just asking about how common it is for someone so young to develop lymphedema. It's really um, difficult to answer that one. There are a lot of people undiagnosed like Rolf who have had it, but it's not until they're older. Rolf was in his teens, but sometimes um, people are in their um, 30s or even older before it's discovered. So really difficult to know um, how many are born with lymphedema as uh, Rolf was. But um, I know that there is a specialist interest group for people looking after children with lymphedema and they have about 500 um, plus on their books um, in the UK. But that's thought to be quite a significant underestimate. I think I can see someone's ask, asking about Rolf, but the lowest point of living this disease and what advice about getting through this. Um, I hope he went on to answer this. I think the, um, the comment he made was about he was fat and miserable and felt that nothing could be done and um, combination of getting help, but being getting more active, although it was clearly a struggle for him, losing a bit of weight made a difference so he then did a bit more lost a bit more weight and that really helped him to um, turn things around and uh, there's a comment about lymphedema services being a, a lottery and i think i absolutely agree some areas don't have services some areas have um, services that are limited to certain types of lymphedema so it's certainly um, worth asking your GP about it. If there isn't one in your area, is there an other area that they can uh, you can be referred to? And as we heard in another session this morning, if that's the answer is no, please take it to your MP. They can ask the right questions and help stimulate um, plans to change that for the future. Um, we are all trying to do our best there are serious gaps in services for people with lymphedema. Uh, somebody else saying, again with Rolf, that diagnosis was a game changer. Um, getting a diagnosis and getting a management plan made a difference. Um, somebody who had been really depressed because they'd lymphedema for a long while and it wasn't, they weren't getting help and it wasn't getting any better. And just about the um, impact of it uh, causing um, spine problems, knees, musculoskeletal problems, just limiting people and the importance of getting help. I'm not sure there's any more questions, but um, if there isn't, um, I think I would certainly like to see that video again. It was a real inspiration lots of messages to take away, but there are also other um, sessions on Nice Matter that can add to that specific sessions about how you can get fit, things you can do, doing that little bit every day, regardless of where you're starting from. Um, some people can do 5Ks, marathons, um, lots of activity. Some people can't, but you have to start somewhere. So thank you very much to everyone for uh, listening and joining today's session. Please look at Legs Matter website um, and look at some of the other videos and hopefully you'll find things there to help you and some guidance on how you can help yourself, but also where you can seek further help from. So thank you very much to everyone and thank you again to uh, Rolf and to Anna for sharing that um, experience with us. Thank you.